three quarters of the Kenyan population below 35. Kenya, urbanizing at a rate of 3.4% per year. As such, urban centers face a shortage of 200,000 housing units annually and only 50,000 new housing units are being constructed every year. One percent of urban households are estimated to live in slums. This is mostly due to qualitative factors such as overcrowding and access to basic services. In urban centers, 56% of households live in one single room and only 19% own their homes, according to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics 2018. The government promised Kenyans 500,000 housing units by the year 2022. Decent and affordable housing for all Kenyans, that is the vision. Today, we are here at Park Road Ngara to view the affordable housing project that the government is setting here and see how far the project has gone, what the project looks like, and what is the reality on the ground. Mr. John said, the, our Park Road affordable housing project has four blocks for housing and one block for the parking. And the, the other one is the kindergarten. So that's the, a, total, a total six blocks. The project has also been a source of employment for over 200 employees whose standard of living has improved. Tava, you make great jobs. Whereby? The project, which was flagged off by President Uhuru Kenyatta, will see the first complete units handed to the government by October. With the first project up and running, the government needs funds to run more similar projects. As such, the introduction of the 1.5% levy on employers and employees as contribution to the project. However, what does the constitution say about this levy? Under the finance bill, they amended section 31A of the finance bill to ensure now that the employer gets 1.5% from the employee's salary to go to a fund that is being set up called the housing fund that will enable uh, the government at the end of 15 years to construct houses that citizens now can get the houses. They are trying to do away with the informal settlement. Uh, that is as far as the, as the constitution and the legal uh, framework is concerned. And so whatever thing they are doing, they are within the confines of the constitution because the constitution is, giving, is granting them powers to ensure that there is affordable housing for its citizens. But whether the way they are going about it is a, it's logical, it's another conversation altogether. But with, with regards to the parameters of the, of the law, then they are within the parameters. The levy has been met with opposition from both employees and employers, with the Federation of Kenyan Employers being totally against the levy, terming it illegal and unnecessary burden on Kenyans. Our stand on the housing levy remains that it is not a levy that uh, employers can support because we think it will increase the cost of business and also put more burdens on the employees who are supposed to benefit from the housing that is proposed. The idea is good, but it should be financed differently. There are different ways of financing housing projects. It's a good idea to build houses for Kenyans, but you can't force employers and workers to pay tax into a levy without any assurance of a benefit because it has been said it will be a lottery uh, that is used. And there are people who already have houses who may not want houses. There are people who just want to rent houses. So we need to discuss this issue more robustly to be able to agree on how best to realize that vision. But we remain in court and uh, many other players have come into litigation. Many cases have been filed and that's a sign that it's not just the employers 
who are saying no. Many Kenyans are saying no, and we need to go back to the drawing board as a country to have a good conversation about the idea of uh, affordable housing, universal health cover, and anything we want to do under the Big Four agenda. Controversy left, right, and center. Different forces pulling different directions. However, Charles Hinga, Principal Secretary, State Department of Housing and Urban Development, says the focus is on building 500,000 units of affordable housing. One message, affordable housing is a brilliant idea and 1.5% salary deduction is not a levy, but rather an investment. We benchmarked with some of the best countries and we looked at what Singapore did and we have seen the fruit of what they did. So an element of sacrifice and theirs was a real sacrifice because if you have to put aside 22% of your salary and the employer has to match it by 17%, that is a huge sacrifice. But go to Singapore today. You know, the other day I heard that they've now stopped Kenyans from, a lot of uh, Kenyan companies from benchmarking because otherwise every week there's a group going in there from Rwanda and from all over the places. But that is, uh, they are a template of how to do things. Now you go to Mexico, uh, Mexico had a similar program. Now we've benchmarked with Mexico on how not to do things because their program ended up being shambolic. Uh, yes, there was a contribution, 5%, 5%, but they also never factored other things like infrastructure to the sites. So you end up building houses where there's no water, there's no good roads. They end up being inhabited by thugs and there's a lot of crimes in those areas. So we have benchmarked on what to do and not how to do it. Another area which we've also seen questions being raised around is the issue of distribution of the houses. Now, out there, word has it that it will be lottery, but from where you sit, you say it's more of a ballot kind of system. So for those Kenyans who do not understand ballot, please expound to them. These are conditions. You must register. You must start contributing. And while you're contributing, you must elect where you want to stay. You will go, you'll get a unique number, and only 224 out of the 20,000 will be lucky to get um, those 224 houses. However, if you've been contributing and you are unsuccessful, the 19,800 that will not have been successful, there is the next one which is Tarehe. There is the next one which is Shaurimoyo. Your money is not lost. You see, the difference between what we're doing here and lottery or patapotea is here you play, the patapotea you play, if you don't win, you lose your money. Here, you put your money. If you don't get the house because of the sheer numbers, your chances of getting the next one are higher. Key to the actualization and the realization of the big four agenda is the private sector. Now, the government has insisted on more than one occasion that it is very keen to partner with this sector. The big question is, for a sector that is majorly driven by profit, how does the government intend to bridge the gap between profits and affordability? Private pu public partnership, it, the way it's structured, needs a bit of amendment, needs to allow for investment of money over, for instance, three years long term. It has to provide for ways in which government land can be transferred to a special purpose vehicle for development to attract funding. Because as it is now to transfer government land into a, a, a development vehicle that is owned by private, then you need to go through uh, a lot of series of yeah. things. Uh, nevertheless, they've tried. Uh, there's a promise of uh, uh, trying to put in infrastructure. They've given tax uh, rebates, especially for people who are able to develop up to 100 units of affordable housing. They've come in and uh, waived fees around NEMA, uh, uh, NCA, but there's still more to be done, even just making sure that uh, approvals are done within the same uh, level, because now you have to take up your papers to local authority or your county government, you now go with others to Neymar, you know, so this, they are not on the same level playing. According to the World Bank report on affordable housing project, the government of Kenya targets households with minimum monthly income of 100,000 Kenya shillings and unit prices below 3 million Kenya shillings. Na sasa kwa mfano, ni minafanya kazi ya contract, ni mefanya kitu kama mwaka moja, na nishia futwa. 
sasa itabaki ni yangu baka siku ile nitajiriwa tena ndio waendelee kukata ama sasa nitakuwa ni wanifukuze ndio hivyo sasa ama kutendaje no i will say no because the reason the government is so corrupt i know by the end of the road i'm not going to get that that house it's better i continue paying my rent or choose to do a mortgage yeah it will be much better for me for mortgage will go like 20 or 30 years but i'm guaranteed i'm going to get that house but this one for 1.5 not guaranteed among the three basic needs of the human race include food clothing and shelter the government has set out to achieve shelter through affordable housing just like the american dream president uhuru kenyatta is now out to ensure that owning a house becomes a kenyan dream not a luxury for the chosen few but a basic need for every single citizen however until the first set of 228 keys are handed over to Kenyans by President Uhuru Kenyatta in September to commence living in the affordable housing units in Park Road, Ngara, affordable housing will only remain but a dream. For Metropole Special Report, I'm Ondero Oganga.